Right, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, so I am Nathalie Jaec, and I am a professor of 19th century British literature here in Bordeaux, and currently I am vice president for research in this university, as well as one of the organizers of the conference. Uh, and I would like to highlight, indeed, the very smooth and pleasant collaboration that we had with uh, Julie Gay over there and Leslie Graham. Uh, it has been wonderful to work with them, so I want to thank them very warmly as well as Muriel and Gaël in, in this Maison de la Recherche who helped us with the organization. And Camille and Augustin, I'm sure you've noticed them. They are the, the little people in green over there. <laughs> and uh, they will attend to your needs for the next three days, as well as I hope they will be able to enjoy the conference since this is, after all, the whole purpose of uh, associating students. Uh, so I want also to thank our respective universities, Bordeaux Montaigne here, and uh, our research group, CLIMA, and Pascal Antonin, who is the head, and for Leslie, the University of Bordeaux. There are two distinct universities here, and her uh, research unit, LACES, with Guillaume Escalier, as well as the region, uh, the, the Nouvelle Aquitaine region, uh, that helped us finance the conference. So, it is really my pleasure and my privilege to welcome you all here in Bordeaux. Uh, at the Maison de la Recherche, and uh, my dear friends and colleagues, it is an understatement to say that I am really very happy to welcome you here in Bordeaux. Uh, if, as Jankelevich said, pleasure lies in anticipation, in the adventurous moment just before the advent of the event, well, there has been much, much adventurous pleasure in it, since we've been waiting for two years before we're finally able, before we're finally able to hold that twice po postponed conference. Some of us lost patience or funding. Others could not make it this year. And we're very sorry for that. But you're all here today, and it's really wonderful, truly, uh, to see you all. So this conference is not quite like any other to me. I got acquainted with this distinguished bunch of Stevensonians exactly 20 years ago at the memorable Gorniano Conference on the shores of Lake Garda in the summer of 2002 and uh, a conference that was organized by our own two iconic Richards over there, Richard Ambrosini and Richard Dury, who are here in the flesh this morning. Dorian Gray-esque, for sure, because they look just like they did uh, 20 <laughs> years ago. Uh, <laughs> there were very comfortable armchairs, I remember, uh, at Garniano, and quite improbable bathing suits as well. Jean-Pierre Nogret was there as well, and as the leading and grounds opening French uh, academic on Stevenson, among other things, we thought he was the perfect choice to be our plenary speaker today. As was Robert Louis Ab Abrahamson, is still sleeping or what? He's not here, uh, but he's going to be. Glenn Denorkey, Caroline McCracken, Linda Dryden, Penny Fielding. Uh, you all took me in at the time, uh, despite my being rather a Conan Doyle uh, scholar. And, of course, it is a great personal pleasure to have you all here. This conference uh, resulted in the publication of an important book that has become a landmark in Stevensonian studies, Robert Louis Stevenson, writer of boundaries, that we all have in our uh, bookcases, I'm sure. And it was followed by quite a few more conferences in Sarana, Sydney, Bergamo and Edinburgh in uh, 2018. Now, building, nourishing, and revitalizing international academic communities and academic friendship is, I think, a very, very important mission. And these people, as well as others who could not come this year, Stephen Arata, Jenny Calder, Anne Colley, Oliver Bockton, Michaela Vannon, Alan Sanderson, Robbie Gore, Barry Manikoff, Rory Watson, there is always the uh, very, very probable uh, problem that you're not going to quote everyone, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a few, but these people have played dis dis well a, dis a decisive role in building that community, and uh, I want to thank them for that. 
And so uh, it is wonderful to see that along with dear canonical faces there, there are also newcomers every year. Some who have been part of the bunch for quite a while and others that are brand new. Caroline Crépin, welcome. Kevin Christine, and perhaps you will allow me a special tribute to Julie Gay right here. She doesn't know, so I hope she's not going to cry. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she uh, was a former student of mine and she defended a couple of years ago a brilliant uh, PhD on the motif of the desert island in uh, 19th century British literature. And she just got a permanent position as a maître de conférence in France, which is not uh, that easy. So I wanted to, um, well, it's, well, I'm sure she will be able to contribute to ensure the future of Stevensonian studies in France. And so um, really heartfelt congratulations. Uh, finally, it's also quite pleasurable to me to have drawn in a couple of my Bordeaux colleagues. Uh, to have transmitted locally some of the Stevensonian virus. So you can see Antoine somewhere, and there are more coming. Uh, I also want to welcome the associations that are here with us today, the cultural route of the Council of Europe, the Robert Louis Stevenson Club, the French Society for Scottish Studies, and to thank them for the flowers, which I thought was just a wonderful way to start the conference. Uh, it's, it's great to be able to celebrate, thanks to you, the collaboration between uh, civil society and the university. So today, around an aperitif that uh, they offered to treat us with, they will tell us more about Stevenson in France and Les Cévennes around the exhibition that uh, they put up in the hall yesterday. So thank you very much. Finally, I also want to salute the memory of Michel Lebris, who was meant to be, along with uh, Jean-Pierre, one of our two guest speakers and who passed away sadly last year. So uh, Michel was a lifelong admirer of Stevenson. He organized for more than 30 years in Brest, Le Festival des Grands Voyageurs. <laughs> Saint-Malo. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, sure, in Saint-Malo, why did I say Brest? Um, and he, he definitely played a major role in the transmission of his passion for literature and adventure to whole generations of uh, people. So it would have been a treat, definitely, for us to have listened to, well, to be able to listen to one of his fervent talks. Now, RLS 2022 is now in Bordeaux, and the idea was born in Edinburgh in 2018. Leslie and I were caught absolutely unawares by Linda Dryden over there, who was hosting the conference, and she casually threw in the idea that Bordeaux would be the perfect next location for uh, RLS. Well, we were certainly carried away by Scottish enthusiasm, and we immediately agreed. <laughs> and, well, we have never found a moment to regret that. And the next conversations at dinner were about finding a topic. Uh, the initial idea was around food and drinks. Well, France and Scotland. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we very soon enlarged it to pleasure. That definitely rang an immediate Stevensonian bell and we thought that was, um, that was going to be it, Stevenson and pleasure. So you've got here the very beautiful quote by Stevenson. I am going to quote only the first sentence. In the life of the artist, there need be no hour without its pleasure. And so I hope that's exactly what we are going to, well, not artists, not all of us, but I hope the conference similarly will be full of pleasure. So there we all are, uh, after a couple more words of introduction from Leslie and, um, and Julie, to listen, ready to listen to Jean-Pierre kicking off the conference. And I hope the three days will definitely live up to the promise. And I thank you very, very much again for being here. Thanks. So it's my turn and my very great pleasure to welcome you to Bordeaux. Why organize a Stevenson conference in France? Why Bordeaux? Well, apart from the coincidence of the three of us uh, working on Stevenson in two different universities in Bordeaux, and the very real pleasure that the three of us derived from the idea of welcoming you all here, and the admittedly prolonged process of concocting an enjoyable and stimulating program thanks to your inspired paper proposals. After Scotland, both Stirling and Edinburgh, Italy twice, 
Saranac Lake, Sydney, it's easy to see why a Stevenson conference in France was overdue. We know that Stevenson loved France and embraced the language, called it home on more than, during more than one period of his life. And as we'll hear in greater detail in various papers over the course of these two and a half days, and as we can see from the exhibition put together by our friends from the Stevenson Cultural uh, Route, he spent significant periods of time in other parts of France, in Paris, around the Forêt de Fontainebleau, on the canals of Belgium and the north of France, in the Cévennes. And as a young man, the south of France provided him with breathing space, both literally and uh, metaphorically, away from his parents as a young man and in a climate that suited him in Menton, or Mentoni, as Robert Louis Abrahamson says. And it later provided him with a family home in Iyeha, a place to live, a, a little chalet to live in, and um, that was what he called the happiest period of his life, thus far at least. But there is the pesky fact that he never came to Bordeaux. He never <laughs> came to the south of, uh, southwest of France, despite a love of the bottled poetry that is good red wine, and particular it's in, in particular it seems Chateau Olafite, which is actually just a, a stone's throw away from where we are at the moment. So he never, he never travelled to this uh, part of France, but we do know that he wanted to come, in a letter to Colvin in July 1886, Fanny wrote from Bournemouth, and I quote, Louis is thinking a little of going by sea to Bordeaux. I don't think any of you came by sea. <laughs> Thence the Pyrenees. I don't know what to do. France is so hot <laughs> and unhealthy in the summer. But I rather think he has got his heart set upon it. From Bordeaux, he would go to Paris. Why? And then the mountains. He thinks it would be cheap, but I fear he is wrong. <laughs> well, yes, it is a little hot this week. We have to admit it. And it's not exactly cheap, perhaps. <laughs> but we still have good wine and good food. And we hope that over the coming three days, apart from the intellectual nourishment that you have all brought from near and far, that you will have ample opportunity to sample the pleasures of Southwest France. I don't have, I, I'm going to be quick because uh, our keynote uh, speaker is uh, waiting. But uh, I want to thank you all again for traveling all the way to Bordeaux and uh, for joining us for this uh, conference. We're very happy uh, to have you all here. We have a very rich program uh, planned, uh, starting with the keynote by Jean-Pierre Negret, who needs no introduction. Um, I'm uh, in charge of the practical side of this introduction, so I'll just remind you of a few elements concerning the organization uh, of the conference. So first the keynote, then at 10.30 we'll have a coffee break outside under the trees. Um, and for noon we have the presentation of the cultural route in the footsteps of Robert Louis Stevenson by Michel Legros and um, the team has been uh, nice enough to offer us uh, an aperitif. So uh, we'll, we'll be able to taste some uh, Stevenson beers as well. <laughs> um, and then the lunch buffet will be uh, at the same place uh, over here. Uh, tonight, uh, we have the cocktail reception at the City Hall. So uh, some of you may know where it is. It's in the very center of the city. If you go on your own, you can take the tram and stop at tram, uh, take tram B and stop at Hôtel de Ville. And it's just behind the cathedral. If you want to go with us, we'll go uh, together after the last uh, session and we'll lead the way there. 
And at this cocktail reception, we'll have uh, a few drinks offered by the city hall, and we will uh, be lucky uh, enough to listen to uh, an, uh, a presentation with a dramatic reading by Robert Louis Abramson and Richard Dury uh, about uh, an apology for idlers. So that's it for today's organization. I won't. Uh, throw in too much information. I just want to uh, remind you that if you haven't uh, uh, signed, uh, signed in yet, uh, you can do that at the front. Uh, you will get your little uh, bags with uh, a few goodies and uh, you also uh, will get your uh, name tag. Behind this name tag, you've got some uh, labels, some um, Tickets, tickets uh, with uh, everything that you signed up for. So uh, every uh, time you attend one of the lunches or dinners or uh, or receptions, you can just give us the little ticket and uh, we will uh, admit you. <laughs> well, if you, it's mainly to it's also to, re, to, you know, to remind you of what you've got. So yes, if, if you don't have the, if you lose the ticket, we have you. We okay. have the list as so well in it's case you lose them. <laughs> what you what you signed for. And yeah, it's. Uh, it, it just shows the care with which you've organised the whole thing. Right? <laughs> oh, thank you, my dear. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, you also did you print out the maps? Uh, uh, you've got maps of Bordeaux and the table, so if okay. you want some, you, well, we are off an hour with phones now, but if you want a paper map, you've got one. Uh, in the bags, you've got the, well, two things that may look alike, but they're not the same. There is a, a small one, a thin one, which is the program, and there is a bigger one, which is a, a, a little copy book. Uh, yeah. with lines for you to write on, book. exactly, <laughs> well, and look at what we've done for you, yeah. so the RLS two, uh, 2022, uh, unfortunately the, the water fountains do not work currently, <laughs> <laughs> so you cannot fill them but you'll find, I'm sure, a tap or something, or mineral water. There's and, a tap uh, uh, in the kitchen behind. So that's it. And. For those who want to have a look at the book of abstracts, we don't have all the abstracts, but you've got a little oh, yeah. um, paper with a QR code, uh, how modern, and you can uh, access the um, Google Doc yep. with uh, all the, the abstracts that we have gathered for the conference. And if you don't have a QR code reader, you have a tiny URL that you can type in uh, in, your, in your search bar. And um, I think that's it. So uh, I want to uh, reiterate, reiterate how um, wonderful it has been uh, to organize uh, this conference and to work with uh, my colleagues. Um, it has not been work, it has been a pleasure. Uh, and uh, I, I thought this quote by Stevenson was pretty accurate to uh, illustrate this. Uh, it's a quote from um, his essay on Henry David Thoreau, and he writes, Industry is in itself, and when properly chosen, delightful and pro profitable to the worker. And when your toil has been a pleasure, you have not, as Thoreau says, earned money merely, but money, health, delight, and moral profit all in one. So thank you all, and uh, shower. We will start right away. <laughs>